Hello, my dear friend. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, hi. This is Junie's Plan with Me. I make pop up bullet journal every month, and as you can see, for November, the theme is inspired by the coming fall season. I was never a fan of the color orange, but how can I resist this warm, cozy vibe? Grab some paper and scissors, follow me, and let's make this pop up scroll together. Or just have a cup of hot tea and enjoy today's video. To begin with, I want to give a special thank you to today's sponsor, Notebook Therapy. I'm really excited to introduce their newly released Maple Dream Collection. The first one, Nara Bullet Journal, is actually launched a while ago with this cute sleeping deer on the cover. It's definitely one of my favorites, and I'm glad it's included in this fall collection. The next one, Kenoko, comes in this purple-ish red one color, and the cover design is this magical shiny mushroom. And of course, there must be an orange color design. This Kitsuno version has a sleeping fox on the cover, super cute, and it's literally melting my heart. So besides white dotted page, Noble Therapy also released craft paper in those three designs. The craft paper is five millimeter dots and using 150 GSM paper, available in A5 size. If you're a junk journal lover, this one is perfect for you. There's also a non-warm tone color notebook in this collection, Midnight Garden. I think this pine green color looks really elegant and calm, give me an evergreen tree feeling. By the way, this one only comes in white paper and gold edge. If you want to have some craft paper but not tearing from a journal, this rainbow notebook could be a good option, or you can use it as a notepad. And this one also comes with a free sticker as gift. For each collection, Notebook Therapy always come up with a beautiful washi tape set. So here I have ten washi tapes, and what's special is this PET transparent foil tape in seven millimeter, eighty millimeter, and thirty millimeters. There are four pattern design tapes and a step gold foil tape as always. Also, a special maple leaves one, which I'll show you in the bujo setup later. The next are pop-up pencil cases, come in two different designs in this collection. It can pop up as the name suggests. No need to introduce more. One thing I want to mention is that it has three small pockets inside, which is perfect for storing sharp tools like scissors. And if you're a stamp lover, this stamp set includes all the elements you need to make a fall theme setup. There are ten pieces made of light pine wood and maple orange rubber, durable and sustainable. Another thing that can help you to draw if you had hard time is bullet journal stencil. There are six pieces, includes some commonly used shape for happy tracking and other purpose. There are also purple and green versions if you don't like orange color. The next are handmade and scrapbook paper set, which are pretty special in my opinion. The handmade papers are pretty thick. Each one of them is really unique, and the petal and leaves are spreading in an organic way. You can even smell the natural plant smell in it, which I love a lot. As for the mixed scrapbook book paper, there are twelve different types, two pages of each. Some has texture, and some are translucent. And I personally love the one with gold and silver dots on it the most. There's also a bag of stickers come with it, forty designs, and each design has two pieces. Covers all kinds of leaves and mushroom, and I really like it has transparent borders, so you can place on the text paper if you want. And the last product is this vintage Kenoko tote bag. It's made of cotton, can fit 13-inch laptops, and there's also a hidden inner pocket with zipper. The mushroom and leaves design is perfect for this season, and I have to say this really changed my mind about the color orange. You can find more information about all the products on Notebook Therapy website, link in the description down below. And I also prepared a coupon code Junison10 for you. I'll receive a small amount of commission fee while you get 10% off on your entire order. In this video, Notebook Therapy and I decide to hold a giveaway, and you will find more information about it at the end of this video. But for now, let's jump right into our today's pop up bujo journey. For the cover page, I came up with this simple rotating design for a squirrel to show up under the leaves. And here are the basic pieces that I'm going to explain to you one by one. The main mechanic is this rectangle with triangle folds in the center, dimension as marked. You can adjust it based on the size of your notebook or card size. And for me, I'm planning to set up on my A5 notebook. So if you're using the same size space, you can just go ahead and follow my numbers. If you watch my October plan with me, which is the last video I released, you may find that this part is a little bit familiar, as they both use this 90 degree angle triangle fold. Except this time, I made two against each other to create two rotating part. 
gray area of the glue section and the second piece will be working as an arm to support the squirrel's body later. As for the last one, it could be narrower or longer, depends on how you want to place the leaves. And it can also be replaced by a thick plastic paper if you have one, which I'll explain in a second. For the squirrel, I tried out a few sizes and finally decided to make this tail about 6.5 by 5.5 cm and the body to be 7 by 7 cm. Again, if you want to adjust the overall size or maybe change it to other animals like cats, feel free to try out different dimensions and make it work the best for you. In the template I prepared for you, there's also a whole page of leaves. I watercolored them to match the squirrel and overall style. Or maybe you can pick some real leaves in your backyard and make it more fun. I actually thought about it, but all the trees in my yard just started to turn yellow and not even red, so I have to give up. Anyway, let's move on to assembling. Fold it based on the dash line, make it into a mountain and valley shape like this. Then fold the glue section on the two ends backwards. The arm will be glued on the bottom triangle, but we'll do it a little bit later. For now, let's place the main mechanic on first. As I mentioned earlier, today's design is actually a slightly complicated version from the rotating teapot. And in that video, I also explained the basic structure of this design, so I'll leave the link in the right-up corner if you're interested. Step 1 is to place the centerpiece a little bit lower in the middle area, and for the glue option, I'll be mainly using Alina Tacky Glue, which is super strong, and Tip Glue, which is good for case that you need to tear out and re-glue. As always, I'll leave links to all the supplies I use in this video in the description box down below for you. Put glue on one side of the centerpiece and remember to align the center line with the binding line while placing it on. Then put glue on the other end, close the notebook to make sure it can work while folding. Then let's put our square on. The tail part can be glued on the top triangle directly, but the body won't match and that's where the arm support comes in. And this part is exactly like how the teapot works in the last month's setup. I suggest you to fold and check after every small step to make sure it works, especially the tail not to get stuck anywhere because of angle or length problem. And for the arm part, you can also cut it to make sure the body part can fit it perfectly. Before moving on to the next step, an important thing is to check if the squirrel's head sticking out while you close it. And now it's time to put leaves on. I'm planning to build a branch in front of the squirrel, so I pick a few leaves I like, then use some help of the third piece we cut out earlier. Like I said, the size of this branch can be different depends on how many leaves you want to glue on and how long you want it to be. If you have hard plastic material, that will be even better because you don't have to worry about showing the white paper below the leaves. Here I just randomly cut a long piece from it, and it's actually a little bit long, so I'll fix it in a second. But yeah, after building the branch, you can start to place leaves on however you like. And the rest is just to glue all other leaves around it, which is the easiest, but it actually took me the most amount of time in this pop-up setup. Oh, by the way, in order to avoid making this page too bulky, I only used thick paper for the center structure and squirrel, and all the leaves, I just printed them on a regular printer paper. For this part, I think it would be good to use the stickers from the Notebook Therapy Scrabble Paper Back Set. But considering I'm also selling this template on my shop, I don't want to have the copyright problem. So if you think cutting off all the leaves from my template is a little bit too complicated, you can just use the sticker from Notebook Therapy. Now we're pretty much done adding leaves. To make it more interesting, you can also put some leaves on the moving part like the triangle area or under the main structure. Before moving to the next spread, I'm going to use the alpha base stamp to do the title November on the left edge. I've never done a vertical line before, so it's kind of fun. I just got this big number stamp recently, so I thought it could be a good chance to give it a try, and obviously I need to practice more for stamping. Okay, the cover page is done, I hope my explanation is clear enough. You can find the pop-up template as digital download in my online shop at junisunstudio.com. Or if you want to recreate with your own style, don't forget to tag me at Juni Sun Xiaomei on Instagram, both on the post and in the description, so I won't miss your beautiful work. And now let's move on to the next page monthly view. I've been wanting to do this patching calendar style for a while, but it's annoying to measure each craft paper piece and cut it perfectly. But this data craft paper from Novotherapy perfectly solved the problem. 
So I cut 15 triangles, each one is 3 by 5 dots, and placed them on to create this chessboard look calendar. Then I used Sarasa ballpen brown color to finish the outline and the rest. Again, use alpha base stamp to stamp no number on the top. Then for the corner decoration, I decided to try out this scrubble block paper and handmade paper. It's true that the handmade paper is pretty thick for this purpose, but there's only one month left after this month setup. I don't mind to have a few thick pages here. And if you watch my video for a while, you may notice that I haven't introduced my new stickers for this month yet. So here we go. The theme is fall animals, but I also drew some mushroom and leaves to give it a forest vibe. If you wonder why there's no bunnies, I've made four cuties in this Easter sticker set, so I didn't include them here. Check out junisunstudio.com and feel free to grab the ones you like and I also prepared November Bujo Kit as digital download, including month title, wash it tip, days in week, and mini calendars. I've been pretty occupied by personal tasks recently, so you may notice that I try to reduce the work and only post one video per month. So in today's setup, I'll also make it simple and not much drawing. But I still hope my layout designs and ideas can be helpful or inspiring for you. On the left side, I want to use this unique texture paper from the scrapbook paper set. The paper is pretty bumpy, regular glue stick is not working, so I had to change to a stronger glue. The pattern is interesting enough, so I just simply write down monthly goal and to-do list on it. Again, the texture makes writing experience not very smooth, but I think it's not a big deal. After that, I also apply the scissor washi tape on top and bottom, which turned out perfect. Now the month review page is done, let's move on to the next spread. To begin with, I want to make an envelope to place on the left side. And obviously, I didn't do enough research, so the one I made is using really simple structure and not very pretty. But it'll do the job. Then I cut this gold and silver dot of paper to fit the envelope and also make it able to be folded back in. I think last time I used this trick was last December and I just happened to have a cute pink envelope from somewhere. Anyway, if I plan to make it again in the future, I promise I'll learn how to make it pretty. Since it's an envelope design, of course I'll do some stamp decoration using the washi tape from Notebook Therapy. And the rest are just freestyle because I don't really have a design in mind, but I think it turned out pretty cute. Usually I will call this page Brain Down, but I've kind of already decided the theme for December, which is usually the main content I write down in this section. So I figure why not call it thoughts so I can feel comfortable to put whatever ideas I have into it and because the letter will be filled back into the envelope, I can also write down something more personal. On the right side, as always, is my daily log. Since my lifestyle has been changing recently, I also use this page a little bit differently. It's called daily log, but more like daily focus. This month, I want to track the time and hours I spend on working, eating, and workout. And that's it. I used to make it even more specific, but I don't think I have the energy and time to track every single hours anymore. So now what's more important for me is when and how long of each activity. But feel free to adjust it to fit your lifestyle. After decorating the borders, it's finally time to work on the weekly spread. Last month, I combined habit tracker with weekly spreads and I really like it. So this time, I'm going to continue the dash door design, but for the habit tracker, I'm going to use X and Y axis style so the cutaway pages could be smaller and there will be more space for writing each day's tasks. Here, I'm only going to track four habits and you can adjust the edge space based on your own plan. The good thing about X and Y axis style is that you can easily see the frequency of each habit and every day's status. It's been a while since I last used this system, so I'm really excited about it. Then for the weekly setup, I'm going to use this Maple Leaves Washi Tape from Noble Therapy and I really like that each leaf has slightly different colors, just like none of the leaves are the same in the world. Because the leaf's thicker surface is really smooth, regular brush pen doesn't work. I decided to use acrylic white marker to write it down Monday to Sunday. And then stamp the dates to match the overall style. On the right down corner, I'm going to place this fox sticker and next to it, I'll stamp a mini calendar on with the current week highlighted. After coloring the tag, let's move on to the next page. Same layout and this time I want to have another adorable porcupine here. I always thought it's cute to have a porcupine as pet, but it's just so cruel to keep it in human house. After all, they belong to the nature. 
Then for the third wig, I'm placing a deer in the corner. As I continue working on the rest wig list, I want to take some time to give a special thank you to my new Patreon members. Laura, Julie, Kelly, Kenya, Alexandra, and Diane. Thank you so much for your support and love, I really appreciate. In my Patreon community, you can find exclusive content, includes phone wallpaper matching the current month theme, early access to next month's pop up design, and a lot of bonus content. Okay, now we're on the last page, where I usually do a monthly summary and next month goal or plan. Here, I use the craft paper again, and I also try out this Maple Dream stamps. The result is really clear and neat. On the right edge, I save some space as you can see because I want to use this note to coordinate with all the weekly spreads. Especially for the notes I want to keep more than a week, this can be really helpful and I won't forget about it when I flip to a new week. Give it some four wipe with a few mushrooms and it's time for the final step, writing down the week numbers. It's just crazy that it's already week 44 because I feel like week 4 is just not that long ago. So yeah, that's all the setup I did for November. Honestly, I'm really happy with the squirrel pop-up I came up with and I think this can definitely be on my top 3 favorite among all my designs. I think I pretty much said it every time, but I really mean it. Let me know what you think. So this month, I tried to make the overall setup pretty simple and you may notice that I didn't make a mood tracker page. Mainly because I realized that recently I always forgot to color the mood tracker and oftentimes I have to go back and check my personal journal if I want to catch it up. Since it's not making my life better, I decided to take a break from it, but for this theme, there are so many lovely ideas from mood tracker, feel free to adjust it based on your need. I'm just here to provide some ideas and inspirations. As long as you think it's a little bit helpful, I'll be really happy. Okay, now let's talk about the giveaway I'm holding with Notebook Therapy. There are so many goodies in this Maple Dream collection and I don't want to choose for you. So we decided to set three winners and each winner can pick one item from the collection based on your need. The way to enter is a little bit different from the past because I found it happened many times that the winner I announced in YouTube community missed the post and I have to randomly pick another one and announce again. So this time, all you need to do is to subscribe to this channel, like the video, leave comments down below with the gift you'd like to receive and your Instagram account. Also, follow my and Notebook Therapy Instagram of course, so I can contact you through Instagram message to make sure you can get the good news. The winner will be announced in my Instagram and YouTube on November 9th. And best luck to everyone! Okay, that's all I want to share with you today. Thank you for staying with me until the end of this video. Please leave any fall emoji in the comments and I'd love to see them. I hope you have an amazing November and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!